Hey, welcome everybody. We are here. It's Sunday Night Live, and listen, we're going to have a great time. I know you enjoyed Tim Thompson the last two Sunday nights with his guests, and uh, listen, we're going to have a great time tonight. My guest this evening is Greg Denham, and Greg, I have known you for a long time. We're going to get into that in just a few <laughs> minutes. You also write articles that have been, po uh, that have been uh, published in the Christian Post, uh, One for Israel and Elsewhere. Uh, you have a lot of thoughts on Israel and end times. We're very like-minded. Um, but I, I want to start off with just these to think about. We get right into it on Sunday nights. We Let's don't do waste it. any time. Let's do it. Thank so you for is. having me, by the way. Uh, oh, it is fantastic having you. And uh, a New York PD, NYPD cop, placed in headlock as cheering crowd looks on uh, the video shows. Yeah. So we, we hear about the defunding the police and and these different things, and police are being demoralized, yeah. dehumanized. Yeah. We're watching that. Uh, Thomas Sowell, uh, uh, one of the black leaders, says, concept of systemic racism has no meaning, warns the U.S. could reach point of no return. I'm afraid we are very close to that. Okay. And then this was reported in Yahoo News today. Uh, this isn't Fox News. This wasn't the conservative site. Uh, Yahoo News today reported... De Blasio, the mayor of New York, uh, Black Lives Matter protests are exempt from large event ban. So what is that about? Uh, de Blasio said all large events are banned. However, if you're part of that organization or protesting on behalf of them, you're not banned. And I've been reading that if you're a protester, uh, it's very fascinating. All of the numbers of coronavirus do not increase. <laughs> But they increase if you go mysteriously to Mysteriously do not increase. They mysteriously don't increase. Is that what you're replying? Yes. Okay. And they mysteriously increase if you go to the beach. Okay. Or you have a church service or something like that. Um, we have a lot to talk about, and, um, but I want to get started with Israel. Yeah. And help people know you a little bit better. Yeah. Um, uh, Pastor Greg and I go back a long time. I got saved over 30 years ago. It was 1988 to be exact. I got saved... And the first pastor I ever uh, sat under the teaching of, other than Chuck Smith, it was Chuck and you. So Chuck was Sunday mornings, and then I went to your ministry. I can't remember what night it was. Keep this up. It my was, mom is watching. This is, is excellent. Watching. Uh, so Chuck this is great. Okay, so Greg good. was actually my first pastor and, uh, that I sat under for quite some time. And then you moved on to Northern California. That's right. And you were a pastor up there for 27 years. Yes, sir. And then you came back to Southern California. Yeah. And uh, you're down in the Vista area now. Yeah, San Marcos. And, uh, Rise Church, San Marcos. Rise Church, San Marcos. Yep. So you can look up Rise Church in San Marcos. And uh, Pastor Greg has been a great friend, a great pastor for me over the years. Uh, we reconnected at a prophecy conference about a year and a half ago. Our conference, a That's year right, ago, exactly wasn't it? exactly right. It was exactly last June. Right. It was our yeah. conference out in the desert. And I wanted to have you as a guest. I think you're very intelligent. I love your handle on scripture and also the way that you view uh, what's going on in the world, the way you dissect things. Yeah. So let's get going. All right, let's Because you and I both understand Israel. Yep. Israel is the key to understanding Bible prophecy. Yep. So there's a New York uh, op-ed calling for an end of Israel. Uh, and in there, there's a, uh, uh, one of the, the writer yep. is saying, look, within five years, the Democratic Party is going to uh, put it, say, is going to be done with Israel? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. How, what was that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, anything that is going to deval Israel is behind the scenes demonic. And, and I'll tell you why. Because there's a God in heaven that has revealed himself in his son, who is the Messiah of Israel, who is the Savior of the world. And there's a genius plan of the Heavenly Father that is unfolding from eternity past to eternity future through Israel, right? So uh, God is not finished with Israel. Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. He's the Davidic king. The Messiah of Israel, the Davidic king, is the savior of the world. And one day, all Israel will be saved. There's going to come a day when uh, Jerusalem will call upon him, uh, the Bible tells. Jesus said, unless, those, unless uh, the generation acknowledges me as Lord, until they do, uh, he, they, he, they won't see him, but there's a generation that, in fact, will. And Paul makes it very clear that all Israel will be saved. So, um, look, anti-Semitism has existed for many years, and behind the scenes is an attempt 
to undermine this genius plan uh, of the Heavenly Father in and through Israel. Because one day, Tom, as you well know, Israel as a nation lives her full potential. When Jesus returns, Israel as a nation lives her full potential among the nations. When you have shalom and righteousness Mm -hmm. ruling on planet Earth, and the nations of the world will actually come to Jerusalem to worship the king. Okay, getting back to this op-ed in the New York Times. Uh, are you still with? Okay. Yeah, right. no, no, I, I, you, I, I love just, I, I have some just questions. Say, yeah. You threw out some things I thought, I've got more questions. Well, so let's let, get to this, well, and then I'm going to ask this, you some more things. So sorry, let me just say this. I mean, yeah, it's, it's discouraging to see this uh, bright young man who's a journalist, happens to be a Jewish man, orthodox, interestingly, uh, stating that he no longer believes in the, in the state of Israel, no longer believes in the Jewish state, but he sees in the future there's going to be Israel as well as Palestine, Palestine as one. Okay, um, and, you know, and, and he believes actually that in some five years, that's all it would take, that you're going to see the Democratic Party uh, behind this in a significant way. Okay, so um, there's a problem with that. And, and let me just say to every uh, believer, every follower of Jesus who's listening to us, it's critical that every follower of Jesus is a friend of Israel because God is committed to Israel. And the Lord is not finished with Israel. The best days are ahead. And we are to have a specific influence to our Jewish friends, provoking them to jealousy in the Messiah. So anything that devalues um, a Zionist position, that is that the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have a right to their homeland, which this new proposition is undermining, is um, anti-scripture. It is an attempt to devalue God's genius plan. And of course, it's a call to partner with um, uh, Arabs Mm -hmm. who do not believe in the future of Israel, and they're doing their best to destroy Israel, right? I mean, I don't know how you have a partnership with with someone who actually doesn't believe in your right to even exist in the mm-hmm. land that God promised. So, anyways, this is this is um, th- this is unfortunate. It, it's a bummer to see Peter Bernard, uh, the op-ed there in the New York Times, saying now he just doesn't believe any longer in the Jewish state. Um, it, it, I want, it's a bummer, but it doesn't surprise me because we're going to see as we approach the return of Jesus an increasing isolation of Israel, and we know that the, the book of Revelation tells us that the devil knows his time is short. So there's a, there's a, and as he does, he's going to be attacking Israel as well as followers of Jesus. Yeah. So when I think of uh, uh, the isolation of Israel, I believe it's already beginning. Yeah. I believe part of what we are watching with these worldwide lockdowns and things going back and forth, Israel's becoming very isolated. I keep my eye on travel. Uh, you watch what's happening. Uh, Jews are, are starting to return, do their aliyah more now than they were before. I, I'm reading those articles. I don't know how much truth there is to it. Uh, but there's warnings to Jews uh, in America, you need to get out of the United States. Uh, there's one recent, it was a rabbi warning Jews, hey, get out of here, there's going to be a civil war, get to Israel. I know it's going to happen because the Bible tells us that in that day God will call people for call his people from the north to south, the east and the west. He's going to call them back home to their homeland to do their aliyah. But it appears that the isolation of Israel is taking place. And I think that's a lot of what is actually going on behind the scenes. Uh, The physical things that we are watching take place, I believe, are only happening because there's a spiritual battle that is behind the scenes that we cannot see. And there's chess pieces that are being moved. And Tom, and listen, anybody listening, don't tell me that the tangible world is not as real as the intangible world. I mean, what we're doing... That'd be Christian science, I believe, says that. Okay, well, let me just say, I mean, at this particular time, we're communicating. There's sound waves going out. And uh, these sound waves uh, are being interpreted as words that carry meaning that have an impact literally in our, in our, to our bodies, physiologically. The point is, is that there are unseen, clearly realities that exist. Um, uh, truth, I mean, what is truth? What is love? I mean, we wouldn't just say, okay, well, truth and love is something material in my brain. I mean, these are ideas. I, ideas are immaterial. Um, I, I think of Carl Jung, who uh, received 
uh, bas basically the basis of his psychological theories from a, a spirit guide that identified himself as Philemon who came from Jerusalem. The point I'm trying to make is there is a spiritual battle. There's an ideological battle. There's no doubt about it. And I think, I think we're sensing it, are we not? I mean, we're yeah. sensing in. It's not just a physical thing. It's a, in, in our country and throughout the world, there's a behind-the-scenes battle ideologically and spiritually. And, and, of course, what gives us discernment with regard to it is the lens of the truth of the Word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Yeah, so when I look at it, uh, Greg, it seems to me, because the whole world is, is following the same narrative, for the most part. Um, and there, there's something that is organizing this thought process. And I, I believe there are some very dark things that are happening right now spiritually, but Satan and his demons need the cooperation of their minions yeah. that are physical beings in order to bring certain things about. But it's fascinating to me. I believe it's the spirit of Antichrist driving things. Um, and I, I'm looking, going, I don't believe we have a lot of time left. But Israel is still the, the, the clock. That's how we can tell what is really going on. And as I look at it, I look at Jerusalem, you see Jews, a lot of them American Jews, that don't want anything to do with the nation of Israel. Yet, uh, in Romans chapter 11, uh, the Bible tells us that uh, blindness in part has happened to Israel until the time of the Gentiles is full. And when I think of that blindness in part, you already quoted from Matthew 23, yeah. where Jesus says, you will not see me again, speaking to the Jews, yeah. until you say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So blindness in part has happened to them, but it's at the end of the tribulation period when you say all Israel is saved, yeah. and the fulfillment, Jesus is coming back, yeah. they will look upon him whom they pierce. But you said something. You said all Israel will be saved. Yeah. I know that's what Romans chapter 11, verse 26 goes on to say. But what does that mean? Because I think sometimes uh, believers get confused on, on that, and they think, well, every Jew doesn't need Jesus then? Yeah, right, I, I right, mean, right. So what does that well, mean? Well, first of all, in context in Romans 10 and 11, uh, Israel's, the reference to Israel there is the nation of Israel, right? So one day, Israel as a nation uh, fulfills her potential, her God-given potential, prophetic potential, covenantal potential in the Messiah. So the nation of Israel, uh, which will be the epicenter of the reign of the Messiah, the anointed one, prophet, priest, and king, will live her full potential uh, during the reign of Jesus here on planet Earth. Now, uh, is there salvation? Is there a right relationship with God outside of right relationship with the Messiah? No, absolutely not. Is there a generation that uh, there you'll, you'll see Jews calling upon the Messiah, the Lord Jesus? I'm absolutely convinced of it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord returns, Tom, at the darkest time in human history. It is a love rescue. I mean, Jesus returns as judge. He brings shalom. He brings justice. He, he, the adult walks into the room. He returns as savior. It's a rescue. So there's not a greater friend of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's not a greater friend of your neighbor, my neighbor, our, our, every, the hum, humanity than Jesus. And he comes back as king. He's the Davidic king. He's not on his throne yet. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's making intercession for us. He is the ultimate anointed one, Messiah. You know, I, I have Orthodox friends who believe in a Jewish Messiah. Respectfully, it's not the grade, it's not the weight of a Messiah, belief in Messiah that we hold to, the anointed one, the one who came and bridged the gap between God and man, who, who brought healing to the core problem of man, which is broken relationship with God, the anointed one king, the anointed one uh, prophet. He's the word that has become flesh. So um, to your question, <laughs> do you remember your question? I'm going on. Yeah. But to your question, okay, yeah, I mean, for one, uh, look, there's only salvation in the anointed one, prophet, priest, in Jesus. In Jesus, hung blood, gave his life for us, resurrected his sin, is coming back. Only in him, only in Yeshua. Uh, but, but Israel, as the Bible speaks of Israel in a variety of ways, and one is as a nation. And one day, in the Messiah of Israel, 
Uh, the nation lives their full potential. And I just to say, listen, I, I just want to say to all of our, uh, our, all of our brothers and sisters out there, it's so critical that you, act, you have a, a similar commitment, if not the commitment of the Lord to Israel, because he's committed to Israel. It's like, why are we a friend of Israel? Because the Lord himself is a friend of Israel, and the gospel is first for the Jew and then the rest of the world. So, yeah. A great, great answer. Okay, another question is you had mentioned the Lord's going to rule and reign. Shalom and righteousness from Jerusalem. Yeah. Millennial kingdom. Uh, we're going to travel to Jerusalem. We are. During the millennial kingdom. You and I, oh. How's Don't that you out? miss Israel? You said, Very much. I saw, it in a, so, I saw it in Instagram. You miss, don't I, you miss I, Israel? I miss Israel. Sorry. I know you do too. I'm sorry. I was, you go I there all the time. I jumped so on that how do we, yeah, yeah, how do we... Uh, so during the millennial kingdom, maybe you don't know this. I, I get that because I'm not sure exactly how this is going to work yeah. out. But people do, I get, people wonder, how is it during the millennial kingdom, who's going to live in the area of Jerusalem where the rest of us are going to live? Where, where are we going to live, us who are Gentiles? Yeah. Um, There's still the, the whole world. It's a millennial reign. Uh, the, the wolf is laying down with uh, the lamb, and we yeah. have all these other things going on, that, that shalom. Yeah. Um, how does that work out? Well, first of all, I mean, I, I've thought a lot about this personally. Like, you know, where would I like to be during the millennium? Which is not really akin to your question, but... The same place I'd probably like to be. Well, first of all, I'm going to say my wife is watching. I want to be wherever okay. she is. I'm okay. just saying, and I'm not kidding you. So okay. that's one thing. No, no, number two, where would you, where would you, let's I mean, say let's, let's talk your about wife your, and you were in agreement. Listen, I, I actually want to be right above the Kidron Valley, man. I'd just be hanging around... So right you the talk about the Mount David Olives? City. You think about the Mount Olives? I'm talking about right south of the southern steps, between the southern okay. steps and, right. and David right. City. Right. Okay, I had to David. say that. I miss Jerusalem. God That'd bless you. That'd be sweet. Let's go sometime together. <laughs> okay, I mean, how is it going to work? I mean, the thing is, is that there's some sense, as I understand, some sense of national identities going on during the reign of Jesus, because Zechariah 14 tells us the nations of the world come yes. to worship yeah. the king. And, but, you know, listen, we, we were taught by our, our precious Lord to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I, I, we have grandchildren now. Oh, I Do you have grandchildren? No, I'm, I'm only 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it was grandchildren also. They play with these, they play with these Legos. I have, a, I have a new puppy. Okay, or you have a new puppy. I think I saw that. So they have these Legos, you know, and they, they put them together. One day... Heaven on earth, integrated shalom, righteousness, justice. Really what most people are longing for. But we have to understand the only way there is through Messiah. Come on. I mean, come on. I mean, how beautiful that is. I mean, you know, if you ask most people what they, what they want in life, they want joy, they want peace, they want justice. Most people, okay? The, the salvation is only in Christ. Only in Christ. That's a beautiful thing, by the way. And you embrace him, your heart enlarges to love your fellow men. But anyways, look, there is some sense of national identity at the return um, throughout the world. So one day, all of, uh, of Southern California is going to know. All of Southern California will know that Jesus is the king all along. Which kind of reminds me, Tom, we got to get our bow right. We got to, yeah. you know, a lot of people are kneeling and yeah. bowing these days. Yeah. But, the, but the, let me just say real quick that, uh, and, and they're doing so because they are saying there's injustice in the world today. There's injustice, so they're bowing in demonstration, and I understand that. But what's critical is, is that the, we, ha we have to understand the greatest injustice of all is not having right allegiance with the Lord who made us and created us and revealed himself at his son. So... Uh, and we have to, therefore, not to be cute, but really sincere here, have to get our bow, our worship right. Because if it's not right vertically, everything is yeah. thrown off. Yeah, if we're right vertically, I love how you put that. Get our, we, we've got to get our bow right. We have to get our kneel, kneel right. right. Worship it's, right, it's right. Worship, it's kneeling before the Lord, it's worshiping Him. And then our relationships... The horizontal works out exactly right. a, a lot better. We're going to have peace with one another. Exactly um, right. But we must put God first. And we have a world that does not put God first. Right. Um, I'm going to throw something else out yeah. to you. You ready? Okay. Still along the subject of Israel. Okay. So you brought up getting our kneel right. Uh, racism is, is the big thing of today. Yeah. Um, in Matthew chapter 24, 
Jesus gave several different signs to look for just before his returns. One of them is nation would be against nation. As you know, that Greek word for nation is ethnos. We've got our English word ethnic, so we have people group or race groups. Yeah. In other words, Jesus was saying people wars or, or people group against people group or race wars would increase exponentially yeah. just before he returns. Okay. Okay, with that, we look at all these things that are going on um, in Israel. There are, in the world, even in the Bible, there is a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. Yeah. Now we know that if you're a believer in Christ, that God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants forever. Yeah. It's a forever covenant. Yeah. So as a Gentile, I am grafted in to the family of God. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, because I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. But... There are, you know many Jews, I know many Jews. And Gentiles are looked at as different. Remember, I, I've told our congregation this before, very first time I went to Israel, I don't know if you experienced this or not, but I was somewhere, I can't remember where, it was in the northern territory somewhere, I think in Tel Aviv. And there's a lady there, and I reached out to, I was so happy to be in Israel. I yeah, wanted yeah. to thank her, okay. uh -oh. and she looked with my hand. Oh. Yeah. Yes, that's what she Orthodox. Oh, oh I didn't realize what Orthodox was. Yeah, I right. didn't, well, I didn't realize the, the hairdress of the Orthodox yeah. women. Or any, I didn't yeah, yeah, understand yeah. that part of the right. culture yeah. or wouldn't have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she threw her, she went like this, yeah. and she screamed, Goy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, right? yeah. and so there is that. Oh, you're, you're a Goyim. You're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Goy. Um, and there is that. And I can see as things play out uh, that Jews could, and, and you know, correct me if I've got wrong thinking here, sure. but I could see Jews easily being labeled as the ultimate racist, and here's why. is because we have this in the Bible. Uh, that's the way God chose the Jewish people for the Messiah to come from when he gave them the land. But there's so much opposition yeah. to the Jew. There, there always has been the attempt to eliminate the Jewish race. Yeah. Um, and we know in the last days, as you mentioned, this is only going to increase yep. this vitriol towards yep. the Jew. And I know this is speculation, but I have a pretty strong feeling yeah. that things are going to go that way if we are close to the return of the Messiah. Right, so, th so maybe the scenario being that, okay, uh, we, would be we believe in a Jewish homeland for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it is promised to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, and we believe in it. And, and in fact, really, in, in the essence of our expression of faith when we receive communion, uh, just, just real quick, when we receive communion, you know, Jesus did make mention that he would drink of the cup. He wouldn't drink until the kingdom. So he, even in that context, he, he acknowledges the unfolding plan of God is continuing and that it continues with him as the king, of course, in the land of Israel, that God's plan is unfolding through Israel. Okay, sorry. All with, of that's well, well, let me ask you this. With communion, yeah. and, and relating it to the question, so we have the fact that we are forgiven, yep. uh, we live for Christ now, but we're reminded the fulfilling of prophecy is going to come to pass, just in the statement alone that Jesus says, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until you're with me. Yeah, like it's huge. I mean, first of all, a lot of times we, we think of uh, if I could be so bold to say we, okay? But I've been a pastor for many years. We're, we're focusing on the bread and the cup. We're thinking of, of course, our precious Lord's body, and so we should, uh, beaten and pierced, his, un, his, his uh, sinless body, uh, the, the, the bread of affliction, the matzah bread, the cup symbolic of his blood, the third cup in, this, in the Passover Seder, uh, which, which historically would speak of the lamb's blood there in Egypt. Okay, so we're, but we're focusing upon our sins forgiven and, and power over sin and the unity that we have in Christ. All really, really good. Okay, but the covenant, you mentioned this, that Jesus inaugurated with his blood was given to Israel for one. It was given to Israel for which we are invited into. So this genius plan of salvation, right relationship with God, ultimately all things made whole, Jesus said salvation is of the Jews, right? We have been invited into it. So it's like salvation is like this bus that has a star of David on it. And it's going throughout the world. And you get in through Messiah, but it has a star of David in it. We are invited into it. We participate 
because of what Christ accomplished, giving himself for the sins of the world. Now, just now, getting back to what you're saying, uh, I agree with what you said with regard to concern that Jews would be seen as racists, correct? That's a concern you have. Um, and, and it's a little bit in the context of this recent OPED, which is like, hey, you know, um, you, you guys are stalling the peace process. Why don't you get along with your Arab brothers in the land, right? And uh, you, you, need to, you need to bend here. Or, or in other words, you need to partner with people, with the Palestinian leadership, which, by the way, doesn't even, there is no such thing as a Palestinian leadership. You say, what are you, you talk? no, there is no such thing. There's no, there's no leadership that actually speaks for the Palestinian people there. That's just a ruse. And, and, and the reality is, is Abbas is still not acknowledged, right? The supposed leader still not acknowledged Israel's right to even exist in the land, right? Are we, right? Okay, yeah. so, I mean, is there going to come a time where you're going to have this kind of new um, anti-Semitism, it probably isn't even new, and that is you're, you're going to be, you're going to have charges of racism to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It wouldn't surprise me. And, and, but, but let me just say, thanks for your patience, Tom. I'm so sorry. It's all the more reason, I just want to say to all my precious Jewish or brothers and sisters out there, that we understand um, that we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to stand with Israel and to, and to influence in a godly way in the name of Jesus. Uh, so um, there you go. Yeah. So we, we, we need to realize that. And that we, based in, with communion itself, we are actually saying, look, we follow the Messiah of Israel, the King of Israel. God's not finished with mm -hmm. Israel. Um, Israel's put, potential is going to be filled in the Messiah. Uh, we're all a part of that. Okay, so th that's what I wanted to double underscore. Hope that's clear. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at replacement theology, which for every, anybody watching, if you're not sure what it is, it basically is a teaching within uh, Christendom that says that the church has replaced Israel and God is done with Israel. That is not what the Bible teaches. No. In fact, Jeremiah addressed that in the Old Testament. Paul addresses it in the New Testament. And ask the question, is God done with Israel? Certainly not. He is not done. My friend Olivier Melnick uh, said, you know, if, if a Christian really wanted the Messiah to return, he would be about evangelizing every Jew he could, telling them about Christ, because Jesus again said, you won't see me, I ain't coming back, until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's having that right perspective, but at the same time, while we are watching these things take place, the church is actually turning more and more against Israel. I would say, personally, that's not the true church. Yeah. I, I, I'm very bothered by what I see taking place with that. Uh, but it's, uh, you, you put up a billboard, I think, uh, that you stand with Israel yeah. uh, on the 5 freeway down in San Diego, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, was off was main, after, it was off the main highway, but it was after the terrible killing there in Poway. In, in Poway, yeah. and I think Dennis Prager... Um, saw that, commented, yeah. um, but it's understanding this. Is, is, this is a Jewish book. The New Testament is Jewish. Yeah. And for some reason, uh, churches seem to get, uh, don't, they're getting further and further and further away from all those things. I got to say this. Yeah. Okay? Here's what I forgot to do. Uh, I, I need to tell everybody, <laughs> send in your questions live. I got all wrapped up in everything that no, you were sorry, saying. No, sorry. No, I probably distracted I, I, you. I, um, <clears throat> I, no, it was, it was great. As listening to you and engaging, but it looks like we have some questions that are uh, coming um, coming in already. Okay, now there's I don't think there's any way that um, they, that we could know this for sure. Is this simple? This is a simple question: Can the rapture happen before the election? Can what I? is the rapture? The rapture is First Thessalonians chapter four, yeah. when uh, there's a generation that's alive and gets caught up to meet the Lord in the air with those believers who already died. The rapture. Could it happen before the election? You know, first of all, whoever asked that question, that's a great question. But, you know, I wonder if I could just say maybe a little apprehension because leading to the election, it's like, Lord, could you just take us before this <laughs> yeah. election? You know, yeah, no, I'm no not saying that's again. God bless you for whoever asked that question. So, I mean, Pastor Tom, 
Yeah. I would say, I mean, it, the Lord could come back at any time. Yeah, I mean, the Lord yeah. come back right now. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Looking at all of the events. A lot of people, I, I keep getting this too, that uh, they're sending me emails and different things. We're in the tribulation period, and people want to argue with me about it. We are not in the tribulation period. Uh, the pestilences, plural, that Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24 and, and break out really bad during the early part of the tribulation, Revelation chapter 6, along with that and the killing of other people uh, with each other, yeah. uh, a quarter of the planet dies. That's 2 billion people. Yeah. So COVID-19 is not it. In fact, the numbers on COVID-19 are coming down and Bloomberg said this, I think it's today, could have been yesterday, a lower COVID-19 death rate is nothing to celebrate. Well, weren't we being told yeah. back in March, that's what we're going for. So now that the no numbers are down, we aren't hearing about people dying from it anymore because the, the death rate's plummeting. And the problem is it, 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 yeah. it's hurtful to the narrative. Yeah. So we're all hearing about now is how many people have, co have a uh, coronavirus. I don't even know if to call it COVID-19 because yeah. COVID you can test positive for coronavirus if you have something else. Okay. So, you know, when I look at this, the, I thought that should be something to celebrate, that less people are dying right. from it. Well, we so should celebrate. Not, Thank yeah. God for that. They're saying it's no reason to celebrate. Well, Don't I mean, celebrate over who cares what he says? Yeah, I, well, we, I, I would agree with that. Okay. So, so let's go on to this. I'm going to go on to no. this. No, I'm no, going to say, go ahead. Thank, God, thank God that's the case. Yes. Right? Right, okay. Yep. And again, send in your questions. You can send them live to me right now. Dennis Prager, all right? Okay. Said Yay. this. If you continue to teach about tolerance and intolerance, yep. instead of good and evil, we will end up with tolerance of evil. Your thoughts on that? Oh, well, I just think totally biblical. Absolutely yeah. biblical. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples. You'll know the truth. The truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I mean, we, we need right worldview. Everybody sees the world Tom, as you well know, past, present, and future through some lens. And um, so we need to see it through the truth of who the Lord is and what is right and what is wrong. There's no doubt. There's not really, that's not really the discussion these days because everything is increasingly becoming relativistic, right? I mean, one of the benefits, if I, and thank you, Tom, for your leadership on this. Uh, God bless you. One, one of the reasons why it's important to talk about prophecy, Tom, uh, which is what? In essence saying that there's an unfolding plan, everything is moving towards something, namely the return of Jesus, which is a beautiful thing, not doom and gloom, grace and glory. I mean, rescue, shalom, righteousness. What a beautiful vision that is. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay, well, one of the reasons, sorry, I lost mm -hmm. my train of thought. But one of the reasons why, why it's so important to, to study prophecy is because it gives us big picture and it gives us perspective to where we are at at this particular mm -hmm. time. And, and the Bible says that things will become increasingly relativistic to the extent that people are disregarding what is true, ever learning, but not able to arrive to what is true. We need to be critically, critical thinkers. We need to be discerning in our time in which we live. That, unfortunately, is not the case. It's a mob mentality. You know, it's, we're image-driven. We're not really thinking. If I could just say, let me just interject something. You know, Black Lives Matter, if I could just say, well, that's a, that's, a, that's a Marxist, actually, movement. Of course, black lives matter, and every human being matters. But, you know, I just read their website. I, I should have read it earlier, but I read it just a few days ago. That's a Marxist, that's a Trojan horse, all right? So we need to think. We need to put our thinking caps on. The Lord gave us brains. We need to think these things through. We need to be discerning. Yeah. And, and prophecy helps us at that because we know there's going to be increasing intoxication morally and intellectually there's going to be increasing non-thinking so um there you go okay so you mentioned a trojan horse yeah so can you explain real quick uh 30 seconds maybe a minute uh what that where that term comes from the trojan horse yeah so it has a unique origin and and the, the thing is is that the idea is that something can appear one way but but you know paul talked about i'll say this paul talked about a foothold which is very interesting and i'm thinking back uh, thinking back, uh, get, getting in, the, in, the, in a fight with my brother, and I run into my room, and I try to shut the door. He puts his foot in the door, and I can't shut the door. He gets a foot in the door that then can lead to, a, to uh, getting into the room, 
Uh, or, you know, I think in the 9-11 uh, conspirators coming into L.A. And, and, and getting through passport control, you get a foothold into the country that leads to a stronghold, leads to broader breakdown. So the idea of a Trojan horse is, you know, you, you, you have a small opening that may appear one way, everything's fine, but once it gets in, you got problems. And so Black Lives Matter, the movement, please understand, the movement. What happened to Mr. George is just damnably unjust. Um, and for, let's remember, for God so loved the world, okay, for God so loved the world, big, small, black, white, we're of the same race, the human race, okay, but the, the Black Lives, Lives, Lives movement is Marxist by nature, in addition to promotion of that which is outside of original design of male and female relationships. So the phrase is fantastic, Black Lives Matter, I stand on it, you know, can I hear an amen to that? But, but what's behind it is bad ideology and should not be. Hey, can I read you something real quick? Yeah. Just real quick. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Hey, listen, I'm thinking Dr. Brown. Great article recently. One of the founding, uh, founders identifies herself as a trained Marxist. I'm talking about Black Lives Matter. Professor Anthony Bradley, himself black, has pointed out that, quote, black liberation is Marxist liberation. The official BLM movement is Marxist-based, queer-affirming, trans-activist, traditional marriage-degrading, radical feminist-promoting, and more. In a certain sense, it is a fatherless. Uh, it is fatherless as well. That's why Dr. Brown's saying the Black Lives Matter organization is dangerous, anti-Christian, and should be avoided. So, on one hand, hey, let's stand against injustice. Let's stand in the value of our fellow man, and so we should. Amen to that. But what I'm saying is the Trojan horse, meaning that behind that movement ideologically it is a Marxist yeah. as well as other ideas that are harmful. So yeah. that's what I mean by Trojan yeah. horse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when looking at what is taking place now, Book of Revelation, the Bible tells us that God saves people from every tribe, nation, every tongue. That would be every race, yeah. every people Beautiful. are going to be in heaven. Beautiful. Uh, every different color, every different language. When we get to heaven, I imagine we could be worshiping in, I mean, you're going to have Filipino, African, Chinese, you and me. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to be there I mean, together because Christ makes no distinction. Men make distinctions. And the trouble with this is the movement. Now, listen, Black Lives Matter Brown lives matter, uh, red, yellow, white, yeah. all lives matter yeah. to Christ. Christ died for all. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, because of the way it's labeled, it's, you're looking, when you bring up Black Lives Matter, when you said what you just said, if people don't look into the organization, yeah. you're labeled as a racist right, right, because right. you just don't care. But no, you look at the organization, separate that, from a true statement, right? Black lives exactly matter. right. Exactly and, um, right. Okay, you, I got a question for you. Okay, unless you want to, unless you have something else to say to that. No. Okay, this one came in. Ready? Yeah. Is uh, the U.S. Babylon in Revelation chapter 18? I'm sure you've heard that before. If you haven't heard it before, I'll tackle it. Okay. Uh, so say that again. Is Revelation chapter 18. There's Babylon. Babylon gets destroyed in right. an hour. Right. Right. So the person's question is: the United States that Babylon? that is spoken of in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Well, um, can I just make a few comments on that? Uh, well, you can make, yeah, Well, absolutely. First, first of all, Peter in 1 Peter 5.13, speaking of the generation of the Roman Empire, speaking of his generation, uh, identified the Roman Empire as Babylon, the Babylon of the dead, which I would define as that which opposes the true and living God. All that would oppose the true and living God. Okay, now historically there's a Babylon. You're in D Daniel chapter 6, you're studying? Is that well, that was, that was today. Was, okay, okay. I took, a, I took a brief time this morning and taught on Daniel in the Lions. Well, I think it's Actually, a Actually, the Lions thing. and Daniels. Now. Yeah, so I mean, Babylon speaks of that which opposes Almighty God. And there's a future Babylon. You know, Tom and I were just talking about what was, what was in ancient Babylon, even during the Roman Empire, which is esteems their leader as God. In fact, I mean, our brothers and sisters in the first century ultimately faced emperor worship, the chief Pontifus Maximus that embodied the chief uh, leader religiously as well as politically, and there was a requirement among the, the empire to worship uh, this leader. It was an attempt to, to pull the, the, the Roman Empire together to ensure cohesiveness. Now, 
That same dynamic mm -hmm. was seen in ancient Babylon. That same dynamic will be seen in the future with the Antichrist who will pull the world together in the cashless, checklist society, at ideological uh, cohesiveness as well, and demanding to be worshipped like the Roman emperors of old. Okay? And our brothers and sisters, 2000, Peter, James, and John, uh, they, they were increasingly living in, um, you know, in Israel, but in an empire, the Roman Empire, that had such allegiance under such tension. And for Paul to write, for example, to, to, to Rome, you know, the book of Romans, and declare up front that Jesus is the Son of God, to, to, uh, to a Roman, basically the Son of God would be the emperor, the son of the divine, the son of Caesar. He's saying, no, Jesus is the king, because he is. Can I hear a big amen to that? And it's declared by the resurrection, and he's unashamed of the gospel. We need that spirit today. So, to answer the question, Tom, I'm so sorry for going around. I actually don't personally think that the United States is the Babylon of Revelation 18, but I'm not saying that we're not increasingly, as a culture, increasingly becoming godless, because, in fact, we are. And, and the thing is, is this. We are legalizing ourselves to death. We, in origin, left the, 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 the authority of the king of England in the pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and now we're increasingly defying the king and original design to our own detriment. I mean, that's, that's scary. Yeah. That's a concern. Yeah. Yeah. The, the country doesn't need uh, a revival. The church needs revival. What our country needs is evangelism. Yeah. It needs Jesus Christ. Yep. Amen. I would also agree with you on that. I do not believe America is that Babylon, nor do I believe, and I see people send me this all the time, that New York City is that Babylon, because that's where the passage talks about being destroyed in one hour. I believe what is taking place right now, we are not there yet. We are not in the tribulation period yet. What we are watching take place with America right now is America, according to the, it's not in the Bible, in the last, during the tribulation period. In fact, North America is not in the Bible. Yeah. Central America is not in the Bible. South America is not in the Bible regarding the last day's events. Yeah. We know that the power is going to be global. We know Antichrist is going to be at the head of that. And it's after that 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 Babylon is destroyed. But in the meantime, America needs to go away. And uh, I know that's hard for people to imagine. But listen, we are living it. And uh, I hope the rapture comes, back to the other person's question, I hope the rapture comes before the election. I hope it happens tonight. But I don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. In the meantime, we're going to experience it. What we need is God. What we need is revival. I, what the church needs is revival. The, the uh, America needs an awakening, a spiritual awakening. But what's strange is even church people are pushing back on this now. They're not wanting to hear so much about this. Um, and so when I look at the Bible and the state of the church in the last days, this is what I see, Greg. I see a church that's apostate. As the Bible tells us, this is what it's going to look like. A uh, doctrine of demons, um, a church that has a form of godliness but denies the power thereof. Yeah. Look, uh, a church that's lukewarm, Every, looking good on the outside, playing the part. I'm spiritual. I go to church. Well, Jesus is yes. Jesus gets some people to heaven, but other people get to heaven other yeah. ways. Um, Jesus said, "Will I even find faith on the earth at yeah, that yeah. time?" Yeah. Um, so when you look at, and there's going to be great deception. The, num the first sign Jesus gave about the sign of his coming. Be careful that you are not deceived. So when you look at it, you look at the church, you don't see this great revival taking place. Although I hope for it. I have hope for America. There's always a chance when we got, like there was with Jonah, right? Uh, Jonah wanted destruction for Assyria, but God had another plan that looked like Assyria's fate was doomed. When they were challenged to repent, they actually did it. And God saved them. The king got saved and, and uh, put sackcloth on ashes on the animals, but they repented. But we're, we're in dire straits. We worship idols coming out of Hollywood. We vote for certain politicians that are totally anti-God, anti-righteous, anti-Bible, and we're going along with it. And it's like we're experiencing the fruit of the things that we worship. 
Right, and there, there's definite breakdown. There's desensitization, there's disintegration, there's no doubt about it. In fact, one way to understand wrath, one way, some scholars see it, it's kind of the cumulative impact and snowball, kind of a snowballing of being outside of original design or the cumulative effect and impact of godless decisions that end up snowballing and worsening and intensifying. You know, getting back a little bit, just real quick, mm -hmm. to the Babylon of old. I mean, you know, what was, is in a way, because there's, there's, there's a type of Babylon in the sense of ideas and a culture that opposes Almighty God, which gives us perspective. Hey, when the Lord began his public ministry, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is the king of a kingdom that will never break down. We need to remember that. And so followers of Jesus are citizens of this kingdom. I'm very proud to be, I'm proud of our country. My grandfather gave his life for, to, know, to know the freedoms that we, that we know. So thank God for this wonderful country. But please hear me. Uh, that nothing lasts forever except the, 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 the word of God, the people of God, the love of God, the kingdom of God. I mean, so we, we need to remember that. Okay, Jesus is the king of a kingdom that will never break down. And I just want to say, you know, Paul would, if Paul was here, just kind of paraphrasing 1 Corinthians 6, he would say that unless there's a fundamental shift in one's view of love, sex, power, i.e. how you treat other people, there's no confidence that one would have to be in this kingdom once it materializes. So remember, we're saints. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be uh, a, 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 um, a, a, a culture outside of the culture breaking down, a counterculture to the culture breaking down. Um, and so when I think of followers of Jesus, I think not, not kind of statues and something sterile, but saints being set apart, Salt and light, that's what Amen. we need to be. We're citizens of a kingdom that will never break down. Amen. Yeah. This goes along with this comment okay. that came in, just what you said. It really just confirms it. When does the church begin to stand up? We are at the point of collapse. Uh, we keep talking about it. We can't answer when. We don't know when, but we encourage people, do, do this, and we pray and press forward and be salt and light live for Christ. There's a, a, a line that's been drawn in the sand, and it's more and more obvious you're on one side or the other. Uh, you, you can't be on, on a, you can't play, it's very hard to sit on the fence right yeah. now. Much more difficult. And so the thing is, that one of the things I'm concerned about is, is look, you, I, I would just say to every believer, man, keep the disciplines of prayer, reading the scripture, seriously Amen. fellowship like we need each other. I mean, there's definitely undercurrents to break any sense of rhythm in our culture. One of the things that we can learn from Israel, who was given Shabbat, is that throughout history, our Jewish, precious Jewish friends kept Shabbat. That was a, that was a main way in which their identity was retained. Um, and, and we need to remain committed to, listen, fellowship with other believers. I mean, it's, one of, it's a concern of, I know it's sort of yours to every believer, the, the, the decrease of commitment to the church. And a lot of times leaders will say, hey, what we just need to do is a, do our best to accommodate, because we live in this crazy world, uh, through technology and other, and other things, believers so that we reach them, we can disciple. And so we should. We should use every means. But the thing is, is I see a decrease of consistency of believers meeting with other believers, mm -hmm. which is, goes against Scripture. Listen, don't allow that to happen. Respectful. I just remember a time, Tom, and I'm, I'm done like 10 seconds. I just remember a time, like raising our kids, we, like, we didn't miss a Sunday. We're on vacation. We didn't miss Sunday. It was a completely different thinking than, than I see today. So I just say, hey, you need a home church. Be committed to it as best as you possibly can. I know this is a pandemic. I know it's crazy, but um, there you go. A lot of people are hard, having a hard time finding a home church they could go to. Yeah, uh, but you know they're logging on here and JD yeah. and yeah. Jack and and uh, Tim yeah. and some others and and praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I, a few more questions. Okay. This one I'm going to deal with later. But okay. basically, this person is asking uh, President Trump. He pulled the money from who World Health Organization the other day. 
Apparently, he gave the billions to Bill Gates, and that uh, has something to do with the vaccine. Uh, they asked me what my opinion was, what your opinion was. I don't want to deal with that one yet. Yeah. I'm going to be dealing with that because yeah. uh, I have a yeah. lot of thoughts about it myself, okay. as this person does here. But let's go to this question. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll be dealing with that later. That came in from Barbara on Facebook. Uh, here's another question. I'm not sure who this came. This is on YouTube. Doesn't the abomination of desolation occur after the rapture when Antichrist declares himself God? Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends yeah. what your view of so the rapture So I'm, I'm going to be Please, pre-trib. Go Absolutely. You're pre-trib, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael Brown yeah. is not pre-trib. Yeah, he yeah, would take yeah. a different viewpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being pre-trib, we look at the rapture taking place. Here's the thing. Here's why I, I'm pre-trib. is because the 70th week of Daniel is the 70th week of Daniel. Yeah. It's, it, it, Daniel's very clear. Daniel chapter 9. It's about the Jewish people. It's about the Jewish city of Jerusalem. It's about it's all things Jewish. It, it, it's, that's what it's about. And it's ultimately about their redemption. And going through that, as you said, the Lord's going to redeem them. They're going to look up and cry out, Hosanna. It's the 70th week of Daniel. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, the beginning of the, uh, the covenant when the, the agreement is made in Daniel chapter 9 that kicks off the final week. And we know there's a, that, or that seven-year period. So that's going to happen. The abomination of desolation takes place that that this person is referring to yeah. at the midpoint of the tribulation yeah. when antichrist demands to be worshiped as god second thessalonians chapter 2 revelation chapter 13 that's the midpoint of the tribulation i believe we're raptured yeah. sometime after the rapture the covenant is going to be agreed upon in jerusalem what are the contents of that covenant that's always a great question um, but that'll happen and that kicks off the seven-year tribulation period so abomination of desolation takes place at the midpoint. Also, the mark of the beast is at the midpoint. So people right now are thinking, uh-oh, we could be at the mark of the beast in three weeks or in November. We can't be because it's three and a half years into the tribulation period before no one can buy or sell except they receive the mark of the beast. Yeah. You want to add anything well, to Well, I just want to add the fact that, the, that I believe the mark of the beast is totally ideologically driven so keep your allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't buy into any falsehoods, um, and you'll be more than fine. Whatever your view of the rapture is and when it takes place. So my point, I, I don't believe it's, um, you know, again, it's, it's ideologically driven. It has to do, it's akin to this allegiance to a false leader who is opposing God, who's, who's embodying what we saw in the Roman Empire and the Babylonian Empire uh, in one way, shape, or form. So that's, that's what I would add. Yeah. Okay, amen. And then um, a couple more questions came in. You ready? Yeah. You know the social credit system out of China? Are you familiar with that? Not really. Okay, so um, th I'll, I'll explain it. I'll okay. answer it. We'll move on to the okay. next thing. So in China, uh, they've been using a social credit system for a few years. And uh, with that, if you do not, this house is gone. Now everything's increased since then. If you do not speak well of the government, your social credit goes down. Like if you post things okay. on social media, your social credit goes yeah. down. You've, heard, you've yeah. heard of that. Okay. So if you're nice to the government, you speak well, your social credit goes up. So how it would work out is with good social credit, your kids get to go to the best schools, you're treated nice. With bad social credit, you're ostracized. Yeah. You're marginalized. Yeah, right. um, some people are even arrested. You, know, you can't ride on the train. Different things like that have been happening over there in China. That's increased. I said uh, quite some time ago, <clears throat> it's only a matter of time before that type of system comes to the rest of the world. Yeah. Because what kind of dictator wouldn't want that? Yeah. You want control on people, you do something like that. Yeah. So with that, this question is, will social credit systems be widely used before and during the tribulation period? Um, I could answer it if you want. Please. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. And we know it. Because we can see it developing now when you look at censorship that's taking place. Yeah. That's a, a type of social credit system. We are being marginalized if you're speaking of Christ. A program like this um, takes a lot of heat. So these things are only going to increase because they go against the narrative that we know is coming. And we know it's coming because the book of Revelation tells us it's coming. And Daniel tells us that this kingdom that's coming 
is going to be vicious, tearing apart everything it can. It's going to be an absolutely vicious a time when no one can buy or sell unless they receive that mark. So you look at it, you go, yes, I believe this type of thing is only going to continue to develop. And there's already countries a year ago that were talking about bringing the social credit system of China to their countries. And now, um, what world leader wouldn't want something like that? And we look at the direction everything is going. To me, it seems of course, of course it will be during the tribulation period, and I would expect to see it increasing also. Okay, ready? Yeah, well said. Okay, yeah. now we're almost out of time. Are we really? Yes, we are. Look, oh at, look what time it is. I had, I had a, a, a bunch to bring up here. We do not have enough time, so we're going to try and do this in just a couple oh, of minutes. It's 4.55? So, yeah, it's 4.55 it, it's on the West how much, Coast. How much more time seven, do we have? We have five minutes. That's it? Yeah, let, let me, if, we okay. go, if we go over a couple of minutes, we're going to go oh, over no, that's okay. No, no. There's people in New York. It's almost 8 o'clock there, but it's great. We have people all over the world that are watching. Okay, Damon Duck, he wrote this. He wrote many things in, a, in an article that was published today. Um, and I, I don't have time to get into all of them. It's a pretty long article. But he said, on June 19th of 2020, the World Economic Forum announced that it will hold its annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland in January of 2021. And the theme will be the Great Reset. The Great Reset means changing every aspect of society by redistributing the world's wealth, enacting a global tax, supporting world government, and more. I look at a, a great wealth transfer. I do believe we are, it's already started. Uh, somebody, there's an entity, there's somebody behind the scenes we know spiritual, demonic beings, but everything is going this direction. A, a great reset. And I believe the button's already been pushed, yeah. but come January, 20, uh, uh, January of um, 2021, they're going to make it official. Yeah. The World Economic Forum. Wow. And then yeah. Al Gore said the same thing about climate change. There needs to be a reset of the global economy to support climate change. Yeah. Uh, Greg, I wrote a book called America in the New World Order. In there I talk about Agenda 2030, which has a lot to do with climate laws. Okay. Climate laws are on the books with the UN to really bring about the um, submission of the masses of the people to the government, the, the world yeah. government that's coming. It talks about a world government. And so I look at these climate laws, I look at the Great Reset, I look at uh, the Secretary of the UN, um, Guterres, said the world needs an overarching level of multilateral government, governance that can sideline problematic national interests. Yeah. Uh, basically, he's saying we need a world government and we need a leader at the world government we're out of time, but your comments on, on these We're things. We're moving towards centralization. It is clearly prophetic. Let me just tell you this. Once you have misalignment with the true and living God, once you have misalignment, just remember uh, the, the first commandment is to have the Lord as God. All right, We're, we're to worship the King, the Lord Jesus Christ. It, when He is not in right alignment in our life, we're followers of Jesus, everything gets thrown off. It's like life as a vertical plane, and a horizontal, and they're fixed. And if the vertical is off, everything is thrown off. So what we are seeing is we are seeing breakdown. We're seeing uh, a one world order uh, that is you know, beginning to coalesce. All of this is prophetic. It goes back to a misalignment. It goes back to a false or wrong worship of the Lord. So I would just say um, there's hope. There's hope in the Lord Jesus. And remember, he hung blood. He gave his life on the cross for us. He bridged the gap between God and man. He resurrected. He's coming again. And I just would urge everyone listening to us to embrace him as Lord and Savior. So that's what I would say. Amen. Yeah. I look at this, Greg. Uh, I believe that the reset's already started. Yeah. I believe we need to be ready. We need to embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Folks, the time is short. I'm looking at things. The, the rapture could happen at any moment, but ultimately, any, you could die tonight. Yeah. You could die before the rapture. Do yeah. you know the Lord Jesus Christ? We are, uh, the prophecies, 
that are spoken of in the Old Testament and the New Testament are about all ready to be fulfilled. Yeah. We are about to be, this world's about ready to be launched into the seven-year tribulation period. There's a new world order that's coming. Antichrist is going to be leading it. The Bible fills us in. Greg, thank you so much well, for your thank time. Thank you here for having me. Tonight. Me. Really appreciate it. This is great. Come this on. afternoon, tonight, in some that's parts right. of the world. That's right. awesome. This is great. I'd love to have you back. Sorry about your phone. <laughs> People okay. are wondering what that noise was. I knocked Greg's phone off. Listen, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, listen, next week we'll be live here again, four o'clock. However, we have updates all week long Instagram, uh, Facebook, and also on YouTube. I have my podcast that I'm doing all week long. And Greg, any Good final job. words you have for anybody? Oh, thank you so much. Hey, keep your eyes on Jesus. Follow him. He's the king and he's coming again. Amen. God bless. God bless.